the glory which thou givest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. Verse 23. I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and hast loved them as thou lovest me. God did not love Jesus more and love you less. The same way God loved Jesus, he has loved you that same way. So, you don't have to carry any form of inferiority complex. You don't have to carry any form of, you know, mindset, this person is better than me, or, you know, you don't have to second guess yourself. The love of the Father is already your portion. The Bible says, what manner of love the Father has lavished upon us that we are called the sons of God. God has, God has no reserve of love anymore. He has lavished it. When it comes to love, God is a lavisher. He has lavished his love on you. So how dare you look at yourself and second guess yourself? How dare you look at yourself and trying to think that somebody is better than you? Nobody is better than you. And you are not better than anybody. You are just unique the way you are. You are just unique the way you are. That's why he calls us a peculiar people. A peculiar people. A royal priesthood. A choosing generation. And then he says, you are called to show forth his praise. To manifest that glory that he has deposited inside of you. Hallelujah. Now, let's define the glory of God. The Hebrew word for glory is kavod. And it means honorable, dignified, exalted, or revered. So, the glory of God you have received is to empower you to live a honorable life. A life of honor. A life of dignity. A life of value. Where you are revered. Where you are exalted. Because you are a container of God's glory. Hallelujah. And then the, Hebrew, the Greek word for glory is the word doza, which means radiance, splendor, honor, prestige, and recognition, which means you have been ordained by virtue of redemption to live a life of radiance, a life of splendor, a life of honor, prestige, and recognition. That means you are, not, you are not permitted to be a local champion. Because the glory of God that you carry is for recognition. So in every area of your life, whether you are, you are a skilled person, a professional person, a business person, in whatever field you find yourself, you have to understand that you carry God's glory. And because you carry God's glory, you must be recognized. You must live a life of splendor, a life of victory, a life of dignity. The problem with so many of us is that we allow circumstances of life to overwhelm us, where we even doubt the glory of God that we carry. You know, the reason why you have to be steadfast in your faith is because if you are not steadfast, circumstances will redefine your God for you. That is why you have to be steadfast. You have to, be, you have to stand strong in faith. We spoke about Abraham earlier. After God has told him all those things, he was not seeing anything. This is a man God has told 
that a father of many nations have I made you and yet he was struggling to have just one child so most of the times what God will show you or reveal to you or say to you your current situation will contradict it and that is where you will begin to battle should I accept my reality or should I trust what God has said so the Bible told us that Abraham staggered not at the promises of God. Are you getting that now? He came to a point in his life where he has to choose either to accept his reality, which is weakness, fatherless, a failure, or should I stand strong in what God has said? And he chose to believe what God has said. And I told us one time here, if you think that Abraham didn't have friends and, you know, colleagues in business, you know, he was a cattle that must have told him, how can you be calling yourself a father of many nations when you are barren? If you think he didn't have people that challenged his faith, then think again. Most of the time, God will speak things to you and he will open doors for people to come and mock you. Because you have to be tested. Every product you see in market, especially devices, before they release those products, they undergo tests to certify that this product is okay. It has no default. So now we can put it in the market. God has created you, furnished you with his glory, with his grace, with everything you need to fulfill destiny. But right now, as you are seated here, you might be under a test. Because you have to be proven. And tests are in dimensions. Because after... 25 years Abraham received the promise Isaac the blessing came because God has told him your wife will conceive and bear you a son and in that son your seed will come out referring to Christ and from that one seed we will have sons of glory which is all of us here so he has received the blessing 17 years later, between 13 to 17 years later, God said, bring that seed, that blessing I gave you, bring it. Offer it as a sacrifice. And I told us, God cannot give you what he can't get from you. Or let me put it the way I always say it. Whatever God cannot do through you, he can't do it for you. So Abraham found himself taking the blessing to the mountain to sacrifice to God. God even pointed, I say, bring your son, your only son. I'm sure some of you here would have said, if you were Abraham, you would have said, God, this is the only blessing you have given me. And I waited for 25 years. He was 75 when God called him in Genesis 12 and promised him a son. By the time Isaac arrived, Abraham was 99 years old. And then, with all the joy and excitement, 17 years later, when the child is now a teenager, which is when life is about to kickstart, God said, bring it. Abraham would have thought, God, are you sending me back to barrenness? But he knew that he was being tested. Because when you walk by faith, one of the things you must know as you journey by faith is that at any stage that you get to, to enter another level, you will be tested. So you stand to either fail the test and remain at that level or pass the test and then cross over. This is where wilderness comes in. I wish I have time to discuss with us about the mystery of the wilderness. Maybe one of these Sundays 
we'll dig into that. You will always come to a point in your life where you will have to choose faith. Believing God without any reservations. So Abraham went up to the mountain, took the child, burned the child, placed the child on the sacrifice table, took the knife to slay the child. God said, Abraham, stop. I was only testing you. But now I know that you fear me. Therefore, in blessing, I will bless you. In multiplying, I will multiply you. And through you, all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So he passed the test. So the blessing was released. What has God told you? That you are still trying to check if you should believe God or if you should accept your reality. Reality changes, but what God has said does not change. That's why Paul said, we, we, we don't walk by sight, we walk by faith. Because we don't look at the things that are visible. He said, we look at the things that are not visible. Because the visible is a product of the invisible. In Hebrews 11 verse 3, he said, by faith we understand that the words we are framed, katatizo, by the word of God. So that things which are seen... We are not made of things which do appear. I, I love that, that. That writing there is very, very smart. Because if you are not intelligent, you will not understand what that scripture is saying. You see, by faith, we understand that the words, we are framed. That word framed is the Greek word katatizo. The words, we are framed by the word of God. That means with God's word, you can restructure. You can repair. You can put back into shape whatever that has been scattered or disorganized. Because the word of God, the Bible says, is quick and sharp. Sharper than any double-edged sword. Piercing between the souls and the marrow and the spirit. Dividing asunder. So you must come to that point in your life where you have to choose to believe what God has said. Because until you believe what God has said, the glory will not find expression. Manifesting God's glory is connected to you believing what God has said about you, about your relationship, about your marriage your business, your career. God has said something. Your job is to find out what God has said and then release your faith. Hallelujah. I told us here that the message of the Bible is two. <laughs> All scriptures put together. Old Testament, New Testament, they carry only two messages. The revelation of Christ and the revelation of who you are in Christ. That is the only thing you find in scriptures. And why is this important? Because in the Old Testament, Jesus was concealed. So when you study the Old Testament, you don't really find Jesus. But it has been about him. But the good news is that in the New Testament, Christ is revealed. The question now is, where is he revealed? Because if you say something is revealed, it means that you have uncovered something that has been covered for ages and generations. Paul said, this is the mystery that has been kept hidden for ages and for generations. It means that it was covered. For what purpose? It was covered because the people of the Old Testament, they were not the people that Christ was ordained to be revealed in. So some of them don't even know what they wrote. This is my understanding as a Bible scholar. Because if you study most of the prophetic writings of the Old Testament, 
the, the men that wrote those prophecies, they didn't know what they were writing. At a time, some of them were inquiring. They were asking God, who are these things for? And God didn't tell them anything because God don't owe anybody any explanation. Especially when it's not about you. But in the New Testament, God owes us explanation and he's explaining. He's explaining. The Bible says in the old times, God spoke through the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken by his son. And how is he doing it? Christ in you. The hope of glory. So in the New Testament, Jesus is revealed. But the revelation of Jesus is now your identity. Because the revelation happened in you. You are the revelation. You are the proof that there was a Christ that hung on a tree. This is important because if you don't understand the issues of identity, you will not know why it was kept hidden for ages and for generations. Because you must know who you are. Christ in you, the hope of glory. So Jesus is revealed in you. The issue of identity is so vital to your success. It's so vital to you manifesting God's glory. All begins with you understanding who you are in Christ and who Christ is in you. Hallelujah. Colossians 1, 25 to 27. Wherefore, I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God which is given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. Even the mystery which has been hid from ages and from generation, but now is made manifest to his saints. That is in the New Testament, not in the Old Testament. The Old Testament people couldn't understand it. Why? They were not born again. And he said, unto you is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom. But to them that are without, without what? To them that are without, these things are done in parables. But to you, it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom. There are things I have discovered in scriptures and I just give God glory because when you begin to function in the identity of who you are, that is when you will know that Satan is very cheap. That is when you will know that Satan is supposed to see you and change direction because you are coming with the revelation of your identity, who you are. Because until you understand your identity, you will not understand your divine rights and privileges, the powers that you possess. Ignorance becomes the worst enemy of any human being when you don't know who you are. Hallelujah. Look at verse 27. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of his of this mystery among the Gentiles. So Paul called it mystery. Mystery is something that is covered. Mystery is something that is not open. Details are not given. It's covered. It becomes mystery. But you say God has chosen to unveil that mystery in the life of everyone that would dare to believe. Let me show you another scripture and then we'll, we'll get ready for questions and answers. Matthew 11 and verse 11. Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there has not risen a greater than John the Baptist. I want you to pay attention. This is Jesus talking. And this is important so that you will go home knowing who you are. 
because you are not <laughs> you are not a man you are not human you are a spirit you are here to have a human experience because to fulfill your destiny you have to wear this body you need to have access to the eco, eco, you know, eco department of God's creation which is the planet earth where things are physical so you need a body that will hide you you need a house you need a house and God designed the house in such a way that you can you have two windows you can see you can peep from these two windows which are your eyes you have ears you can hear he placed a certain dimension of technology in your fingers which is the one we call the sense of touch that you can feel things by touching because here everything is physical so you also you need to be physical even if you are a spirit you need to be physical to relate with physical things that is why you have a body Michael don't have a body because he's not on earth Gabriel don't have a body what they have is spiritual body and that is the body you will receive when you get to heaven you will receive your spiritual body this one will go back to the dust because it's not you are you getting what I'm saying so he says among all how many among them that are born of women there has not risen a greater than John the Baptist notwithstanding he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he you know what this means I told us that was it two Sundays ago if we have to interpret this scripture the way Jesus put it I can boldly tell you that if John the Baptist is to attend church here in greater success he will have to go through foundation class are you getting that he will have to go through foundation class and then we will teach John Christian doctrine we will educate John on what it means to be a Christian guess see the person Jesus says is greater than John the least the least that means even if you don't understand some certain revelations of scriptures that even if it's Psalm 23 the one we recite in children Bible uh, class Sunday school class you are greater than John these are not my words it's what Jesus said among them that are born of women there has never risen a greater than John the Baptist but the smallest person in the church is greater than John the Baptist. There are things we have to muster the courage to say. Because the reason why we need courage is that it takes courage to set people free. Jesus came to set people free, so he had to battle with the authorities. Sometimes when he says something, they will say it's blasphemy. There was a time he said he is God. They took stone to stone him. He said, wait, why do you want to stone me? Is it the miracles I'm doing? They say, no, it's not about the miracles. It's that you being a man, you are calling yourself God. Jesus said, you don't, if, it's, if it's about that, you can't stone me. Because your own law, <laughs> your own law that you have, is also written that ye are gods and all of you are children of the Most High. He quoted that scripture for them. So you find a group of people that is carrying a law in their head but don't understand the content of the law. That's why they are called Pharisees and Sadducees. They carry these things in their head but they don't understand it. Most of the time, the people that are extremists in whatever they think they know are actually people who don't know anything. But they will want to drag you and make you look like you are the bad guy. Meanwhile, you are the one that is actually trying to save souls. Hallelujah. Let's take it another dimension. John chapter 1 from verse 12 to 13. 
But as many as received him, to them he gave power to become the sons or the, or the Greek word heroes of God. Even to them that believe on his name. Verse 13. Which we are born not of blood. Now I want you to see how you came. I just told you you are not a human being. I will show it to you in scriptures. And what I'm teaching you is how I think. That is why nothing affects me. I always emerge victorious. Because we know that nothing can be against us. Because God is with us. Hallelujah. So after he said, as many as received him, to them he has given the power to become sons of God. Now he said, who are the same people that he has given power. He's not letting you know who they are now. Are you getting it? Which we are born, not of blood. <laughs> I want it to sink. If you are a medical doctor, you studied biology like our dear sister Joy, you will understand what the scripture is trying to say. Because sometimes your discipline, your training helps you to understand terminologies. That is why sometimes in scriptures, God will use animals. Oh, thou sluggard, when will you wake up and be wise? Go to the ant and study her ways. So sometimes God will use physical things you can relate with to teach you spiritual realities. So that you will know, you will know that life is not just what you see. There are dimensions. So he said, which we are born, not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Look at these three dimensions, blood, flesh, and the will of man. So that is why it is called born again. Because the first one is that your parents came together, has an agreement, and you came as a product of that union. So another birth took place, which is the one you are, you are learning now. That's why you are called a born again Christian. That word again must enter. Otherwise, it will not make sense. Nicodemus couldn't understand when Jesus told him in John 3.3, 3, except a man is born again, he cannot enter. The word enter means experience. That means until you are born again, there are dimensions of experience you cannot have. That is why Paul said a natural man cannot receive because he's not born of the spirit. So because he's not born again, he cannot receive the things of the spirit and they won't make any sense to him because to receive those things, the man has to become spiritual. And to be spiritual, you have to be born of the spirit, which is born again. He even asked the question, how can a man be born again? Will he enter his mother's womb and be born again the second time? Jesus said, Nicodemus, I thought you can relate with these things. You are a general in the army. Ah, with all these five star, three star on your shoulders, you're supposed to have some, you know, some level of understanding. The question was so childish. So Jesus need to now, you know, relate to him at his level. And he told him, he said, as you hear the winds blow, and you can hear the sound, but you can't tell where he is going or where he's coming from. He says, so is everyone that is born of the spirit. That's how Jesus answered Nicodemus. What does that mean? You are a mystery. Don't expect anybody to understand you. You are a mystery. If they expect that you are coming this way, they will always they will see you coming from this side. If you are predictable, then you have not begun to function in your born again status. You have blood, you have flesh, you have the will of man. These are the three dimensions through which anybody can be born into this world. You must first become blood. And the flesh have to carry you. A woman have to carry you inside her stomach for nine months. 
and then it has to be by the will of man that woman must have an encounter with a man so that is the three dimensions blood flesh and then the will of man he say you are not on that dimension you are not functioning are you, is anybody getting what i'm saying yes, sir. Yes, sir. you are not from that realm at all that means anything that is traceable from these three dimensions cannot get you this is why i don't get sick this is why nothing affects me because i'm above anything blood doctors will tell you most of the sicknesses people are suffering from is traceable to blood so somebody's rushed to the hospital the first thing they will do is they will take the blood to go and run a test because until they they run a test on that blood they won't know what is wrong with the person that person is a human being But you are not. That is why they call him son of God and still call him son of man. Because he has flesh. But the real man is the spirit inside. And if you understand that this flesh is not you, then you can live without this flesh. It's, it's knowledge. Knowledge empowers. Hallelujah. Now, he said, you are not blood, you are not flesh, you are not from the will of man, but of God. So how did God do it? How did you come to be? First Peter chapter 1 and verse 23. Let's look at it there and then we'll wrap up. First Peter 1, 23. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, that word corruptible seed is referring to blood, flesh, and the will of man. That's how seeds are produced. So he said, being born again, talking about you now, you are being born again, not of corruptible seed of blood, flesh, and the will of man, but of incorruptible. but of incorruptible by the word of God which liveth and abideth forever. So you are made of something that does not die. His word. The word of God gave birth to you through your faith. As many as received him, to them he has given the power to become sons. That's how you are born again. It's something that happened by virtue of you releasing your faith. So your faith is the currency through which you are metamorphosed into the sonship of God. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. So you will never die. That doesn't mean you will stay on this earth forever. It means that you have authority to regulate your life on earth, and when your life on earth is over, you have your throne. The revelation says, when he rose from the dead, we rose with him. When he sat at the right-hand side of the Father, we sat there with him. That is the revelation of your glory after life. So by virtue of redemption, you have, res you have been resurrected. So the life you are now living is not your life. It is the life of Christ in you. That is why when God looks at you, he's not seeing you. He's seeing Christ in you. The hope of glory. Hallelujah. So you must understand that you are a child of God. You are a child of God. And because you are a child of God, you carry the same 
DNA with God. It means that you can create, you can innovate, you can manifest His glory in every dimension in your business, in your career, in your finances. And how do you do that? The power to cause change. When God was looking for where to put it, he couldn't find anywhere else to put the power to cause change. He put it in a system so that through that system it will find expression through another system. So God put it in your mind. He said, I will put my words in their mind and they will speak it with their mouth. So Paul gave us that, that principle. He said, with the heart man believes but with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. That's how it works. So, the knowledge has come home that you are a child of God. So, what do you do? You release your faith to that knowledge, which is believing unto righteousness. And then he said, with the mouth, you catapult yourself or you manifest that glory. So, you are going to rise on your faith right now speak some words with your mouth and when you are speaking when you are speaking when you are speaking don't just see your words like you are talking see it that you are making decrees you are calling into manifestation the blessings of the Lord your spiritual heritage. He said, with the heart, man believes unto righteousness. But with the mouth, confession is made. Affirmation is made. Proclamation is made. Whatever it is, call it forth. He said, even God that quickeneth the dead and calleth those things that be not as though they were. In the beginning, God created by calling light. And God said, let there be light. Call forth. It can be about your finances. It can be about your job. It can be about your business. It can be about your relationship. It can be about your marriage. Whatever it is, make some decrees. Speak some words. You say with the mouth, confession is made. With the mouth, you manifest the glory of God. With your mouth, you turn things around.